Friday evening after 10. I, in Belfast, you elsewhere. We are three hours into our conversation when you suggest a second bottle because the weekend, because the pandemic, because, well, just because. Strange times, I say. Strange times indeed. This now passes for salutation, synopsis and inquiry. Echoed and in echoing, it is something akin to empathy. In Belfast, I rise from my table. Elsewhere, you also rise. We fetch separate bottles from our separate larders, return and raise our separate tumblers. You, a goblet. Me, a pink flamingo glass. When the Wi-Fi stutters, the wine has yet to hit the back of our throats. The video clenches and grinds to slur. For a half beat broken second, our faces freeze on screen. You're large and wide-eyed grinning. I, small and cornered, my mouth hung open like a trout. Suddenly, we're no longer zooming. I'm stuck. You're stuck. We're stuck together. In Belfast, as it is in your kitchen, as it is across the world. Call it a blip. A pause. A hiccup. Call it crisis or consequence. Recalibration, evaluation. Call it a deep intake of breath. I, in Belfast, you, elsewhere, wait as we slowly catch up with ourselves. In this moment, outside time, I think a clutch of honest thoughts, such as, damn the big lad and his widening gyres. Everything is falling apart. Icebergs, oceans, the shipping forecast, capitalism and democracy, America, Europe, the NHS and the BBC, libraries, high streets, institutions, Friday night dinner with family, the possibility of travel, the question of doing church, and what it means to be a leader. And who should lead? And who wants leading? And not a single centre's holding. Even the centre of ourselves. Your face. My face. Like a pair of cubist paintings pixelating across the screen. Have I journeyed on without you? into some lonely after place. Because here, in Belfast, nursing my Malbec, I am the only alive I know. I can't be with you in your elsewhere. You're little more than an idea to me. No different than the TV people who haunt me nightly, sad and angry on the news. Are you still moving? Thinking? Breathing? Are you coping? Are you coping like me? Is there another way to cope? I am stuck. As you're stuck and we should be doing stuck together. But this thing came down like a guillotine and left us islands on our own.
maybe you've gone on ahead to a better, softer place. Maybe you've taken this bitter second and made of it something still and sweet. And you're not caught up trying to fix it. Not turning yourself off and sharply on. You aren't grappling for alternative options or wondering how it all went wrong. Elsewhere, in your kitchen, you're sipping your weekend Shiraz. Centred and smiling in your slippers, you're doing nothing of consequence and thinking. Though you'd never admit it. You're glad that everything has stopped. It's been so long since you last did nothing. In the silence, you're beginning to hear yourself. Is it resignation or acceptance to sit easily in this fractured space? And what's the difference? Is there any? I'd say resignation's passive, like wilting beneath a heavy weight. Acceptance is an active verb, like reaching or holding, like slowly raising a weary hand. Some small but powerful movement which says, I did not want this, but I refuse to let it ruin me. I'd like to ask you what you think. But words have failed us lately. We're static when we talk. What of strange times? is our last exchange. Strange times, strange times indeed. Our faces still hold the shape of it and what looks like howling on my lips, on yours, is more of a known smile. Strange times. Could that be our epitaph? Would it be word enough for us? One part lament, one part wild laughter. Are there stronger words we might have said, such as Sure, it, it is something to have been, or Why did we never make the time? <laughs> Which reminds me of something I heard last week. Something on the internet. We must imagine the world we're rushing towards. We must picture it as a destination no less real than London or Dublin or wherever your elsewhere is. Otherwise, we're simply moving for moving's sake. We will not know when we've arrived. And dear only knows the damage we're doing, hurtling forward at such a rate. So much damage already done. The icebergs. The oceans, I need not repeat, nor admit that I've been far too busy to consider my own hand on it. Alone, here in my silent kitchen, I am wondering how to repent. What needs done and what needs undoing? What kind of world should I rush towards? And is the rushing part of the problem? How different do I need to be? Friday evening, five seconds later, the moment catches up with itself. The screen unsticks. Our faces slur back into themselves. You're moving, I'm moving. Alleluia. Relief comes first and then amnesia, nipping at its happy heels. It's so good to be back to normal. Let us forget where we've been. The fear, the boredom, the isolation. The honest questions we had to ask. But the trick to moving forwards is holding on to what you've learned. I, 
in Belfast. You, elsewhere, raise our separate tumblers. You, a goblet. Me, a pink flamingo glass. We pause and look each other in the eye. I say, it is good to be here with you. It is enough for me. I make myself extremely present. I try to understand your elsewhere. I appreciate the bones of you. I wonder elsewhere in your kitchen if you're now seeing me similarly. We toast a normal, whatever that is. Toast a hope and also communion. We toast to these times we are in between. Toast to acceptance and bold resistance. Toast to a world that cannot be the same.